I had an entire spiel about, you know, musing what it meant to be a YouTuber and how subscriber specials are always just cheese fests where it's either just the creator giving themselves a pat on the back or they won't shut up about, oh, I couldn't have done it without you. You guys are the best. You know, all that regurgitated nonsense. But I really don't want to dwell on that, so instead let's move on to answering the questions posted to the prompts I put out. Woo! What are the episodes of those great locomotives that you are most proud of? Thompson Specifics. Not because it is the first episode, but because I think I handled Thompson's reputation and skill as an engineer in a neutral way. I didn't unnecessarily praise him or demonize him just because he was Edward Thompson. What is the hardest thing to film? Steam locos passing platform ends, as I am a short chap and usually some bigger man shoves himself in front of me. I then very vocally call him all sorts of names in order to ruin the video he's taking, considering he's also also willing to do the same thing to me. What are your favorite and least favorite videos? Before not so very long ago, I would have said Sheep on the Line, the remastered version. That video was a celebration of an older video that I made and I loved it and then it suddenly became my first video to surpass 1 million views. It currently still is the only video to have surpassed 1 million views. And in doing so, doing wonders for the channel. Nowadays though, I can confidently say my favourite video is Cara Maria. It is basically me indulging in my ability to animate my own <coughs> original character. It also might be humorous that people kept comparing Cara to Alcina Dimitrescu, and when Cara finally speaks proper sentences in a video, it is over a song sung by a woman called Dimitriu. As for my least favourite, Chuggy the Tram, by far. Do you want to know why? Why I sat there in my recording booth thinking to myself, hmm, what if I made a video as Thomas-like as I could without actually it being a Thomas video? Would people just click on it in an masse, thinking it was in fact a Thomas video? And my exact prediction came true and I hated it. This person asks, and I quote, Why are you a woman, Scott? Even though you're the main role of the channel, are you... transgender? I'm all good. <laughs> Let me translate this question. Ahem. <laughs> you sound like a man, therefore you should make your online image that of a man. Sounds a lot more obviously transphobic when boiled down to its essentials, doesn't it? Now, I don't believe in a protected class, especially when it comes to jokes, but don't make your only punchline in your comments, haha, <laughs> trans people. Okay? What's next for the channel? More of the same until I lose interest, really. I have a Snow Miser animation coming up, and I want to get that done before Christmas, so I'll start that video as soon as this one is done, because otherwise I'll lose a lot of time on the lip sync alone. But yeah, I don't plan on changing content anytime soon, so... I do plan on doing more Model Railway content though, and I... I I'm not saying that I splurged, I am saying however, I expect a few videos soon. And with soon I mean sooner rather than later. <laughs> Please pronounce some Dutch words, it's like catnip to me. Het was eerste kerstdag. What locomotives do you think got the short end of the stick? Well, there's many that were, in a sense, done dirty, but I will always vouch for Thompson's specific locomotives. Not because they are better than any of their contemporaries, they were not, they had their shortcomings, but because it is generally the enthusiasts that dislike them purely for being Thompson products, and I think that is simply too lococentric of a view. Rarely is there recorded evidence that crews and fitters heavily dislike the long lads, and what evidence there is is drowned out by the overwhelmingly negative views from enthusiasts, be they since deceased or still living. That, and diesel and electric locomotives because Thomas taught the kiddies, steam good, modern bad. Are there any locomotives you wish had been built but weren't? James Anderson, of the LMS at that point, is said to have, at one point, broken all Midland Convention by almost letting the construction of a compound Pacific commence in 1926. The frames were even laid out in Derby Works. Sadly, depending on how you look at it, we all know what happened, and the LMS ended up commissioning the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow 
to build a derby version of the Southern Railway's Lord Nelson for 6 O's. I think it would have been an interesting alternative history if the Pacific ended up receiving the go-ahead and whomever would have succeeded Fowler would have improved upon the Pacific design and we might have never gotten the Duchesses. What are some of your favourite liveries? South Eastern and Chatham Railway full-lined green and I will die on the hill that every locomotive could be improved by painting it in SECR green. What is your favourite locomotive? If you could bring one locomotive, either Dutch, British, American or... If you could bring one locomotive, either Dutch, British, American or whatever, what would it be and why? Bring it where? My house? I'll take a 15 inch loco for the garden, sure. If you were able to save any extinct class, what would it be? Probably something NS. No disrespect to my overseas viewers, but there are currently just two operational XNS steam locomotives, both of them small tank engines and neither mainline certified. Whether you like it or not, British enthusiasts are spoiled for choice for mainline certified locomotives. Over here the choice is between a DB01 or a DB23. I'd love to see a blow a brab under in the flesh, but really the pool for choice of an extinct NS steam loco is, sadly, too large. If you could operate any locomotive on any railway in the world, what would you choose? I would love to have a go on a large 15 inch loco where it feels like you're going fast without you actually going fast. Like a day on the Romney Heights and Dimchurch Railway for instance would make my year. Though of course I'll take what I can get when it comes to operating a steam powered locomotive. How did you come up with Kara? I've said before that Kara was originally just my playable avatar in Splatoon which I, through the use of the animation program I use, Source Filmmaker, gave a role on my channel as the mascot. Then I tried to distance myself from Splatoon YouTubing because, now you won't believe this about a game made for 7 year olds, but a lot of Splatoon YouTubers were... And from there, I turned her into a human and the in-jokes basically took over. Wouldn't it be funny if you never saw her walk? Wouldn't it be funny if she was a witch? Wouldn't it be funny if she actually was an octopus again? So, I didn't come up with Kara as a character. She just kind of... happens. Regarding Kara, how many powers does she have? Without showing my hand immediately, she doesn't have many powers beyond what her magical catalyst of choice, being a wand, allows her to do. Remember, she's an alchemist, not a witch. Her power comes from what she can brew. Watch the space on the second channel. Which genre slash media have been influencing your creative process for Caramel the most? By the way, if you did not know, I alternate between calling her Cara and Caramel. The name Cara is older, but I do not know where the Mel fix came from. One theme within media and literature that I really like is the corruption of a person's good intentions, eventually leading to the very physical changes in a person. Some of the most notable examples of such themes are Darth Vader, Davy Jones of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, his slightly less Disney-fied counterpart Willem van der Decke, various pieces of the SCP author community such as SCP-3663, 321 and 049, and practically every villain in the Resident Evil franchise to name but a few notable. More recently, this theme has been picked up by the game studio The Meadly as the carrying theme in their Bendy and the Ink Machine franchise, though I somewhat feel like that series of games leaves a lot to be desired. So there's the theme which carries Kara as a character, but who is she as a person? Well, she's an amalgamation of the Mad Scientist, Mother Bear, and Gay Why Aunt archetypes. So, for instance, when I animated Cara Maria, I thought the themes of vanity, monstrosity, and a healthy dose of femininity fit Cara to a T. Again, I don't wish to show my hand too early here. More developments on the second channel. This was the most difficult question to answer, by the way. <laughs> Are there any specific locomotives you would like to own in Double O? Believe it or not, but I've managed to hunt down and purchase the very locomotives I considered goals within this year. That being said, I'd like to hunt down and find models of locomotives that were almost preserved but weren't. Think A46007017 Silver Fox, 
a Brighton K-class mogul when one hits the market, or Lord of the Isles. But if you're gonna go down that road, that very quickly boils down to every loco ever, so for the sake of my already badly battered wallet, I'll say the amount I would like and the amount I could have are disproportionately out of alignment. What's your favourite model? It's this Hornby J36. Something about it just makes me so happy whenever I see it run or I spot it in my cabinet. My NS4300 is a close second, though. Then there's also my... Mm, no. That would spoil something. Will you ever get a US outline model? Yes, absolutely, and I want it to be something PRR. I have the idea for a railway museum layout next to the main line in similar fashion to how Shilden's locomotion is in real life. So I would love to get some American locos, even if purely for display purposes. I'm just saying, a K4 with the revised snowplow, I'm just saying. If you could choose a model of a British steam locomotive to be made, what loco would it be and what manufacturer? If Bachman ever decide to make a WD-210, I'll be first in line, especially if they make the NS version. What got me into SFM animation? The year is 2015 and a younger Flying Scott found himself absolutely howling with laughter at any SFM videos that were produced at the time. I thought to myself, surely I can do that too. And I am still confronted with reality every day. What was the most difficult animation to make? Music videos are by far the most difficult. They require you to lip sync, to basically have your character moving for every single frame, and your cuts have to be accurate to the millisecond. What's your opinion on Source 2 Filmmaker? See, just because you get a few thousand views on YouTube, people suddenly assume you know the very ins and outs of the program you use. Quite frankly, I barely know what half the buttons do, so asking me to form an opinion on a program I'll understand even less about won't result in an impressive answer. If you could have any model from Trains to use in Source Filmmaker, what would it be? See, I know nothing about Trains. I know Trains for the Thomas videos. So, I don't know if there's copyright involved or anything of the sorts. I don't even know if the resolution that Trains uses would do good in SFM. What loco would you like to see modelled for SFM? We need more American outline locomotives, if anything. Alternatively, a separate snowplow or a cowcatcher that could be attached to the existing British outline models to make them look more American, the same way Flying Scotsman had a cowcatcher and headlight fitted. How long does it take to make an SFM animation? That depends on the complexity. For instance, Platform Peril only took me one day to make, but Cara Maria took me from the 2nd of October to the 21st of October. The Northern Direct took 23 days, but Magical Mutton took two months. How do I come up with ideas for SFM videos? It used to be the case that once I started an animation, I made it up as I went along, solving both the problems of creating a plot for the video and then figuring out for myself what would be the funniest way to fix this problem. Nowadays, though, I start an animation based on a premise and a single shot. The very last shot of the Northern Direct is what inspired the rest of the video, for instance. Another example is that long, wide-angle wedgie of the double header in End of Steam. Cara Maria started out with the shot of Cara examining her severed tentacle. Which of the TF2 mercenaries is your favourite? I can answer that question from a personality, gameplay and animation perspective. Whilst I like the risk-reward frontliner playstyle that Pyro and Engineer offer, my favourite mercs personality-wise are Sniper and Medic, for their absolutely deranged voice lines. When animating though, Engineer is seemingly my favourite. There are so many fun things you can do with Engineer, purely based on you not being able to see his eyes, so he has to express himself in a far more physical way. He has to actually emote. But for real this time, thank you very much. I genuinely never believed that I would get this far, and waking up every day to realize this is, you know, admittedly a small goal, but it is a goal that many people have, and I have actually you you people have actually helped me to reach it is yeah, that's great and there's literally nothing else i can say i thank you so much i hope i can do this for a little while longer and here's to what we have coming up on the channel cheerio